to you by Sunbeam, makers of the new Shave Master Shaver with three real blades for a close electric shave. The all new Sunbeam Shave Master. Now, let's all play What's My Line? Now, let's meet our award winning panel of What's My Line? First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, usually, I don't like to introduce men who are shorter than I am, but in this case, I'll make an exception because he's such a marvelous star of television, one of your favorites, the star of The Rifleman, Chuck Connors. And on my left, the lady, the most charming lady of a thousand talents, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman whose humorous column in this week magazine uh, appears every Sunday and gives joy to millions. Every Sunday night he gives joy to us, Mr. Bennett Surf. And here's a powerful panjandrum that we shanghai every Sunday night Ooh, for the love. ABC network, Mr. John Charles Davies. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to What's My Line. It's nice to have Chuck, Chuck Connors here because, as you know, the, the Yankees in Pittsburgh sewed up the two pennants today, and all those Chuckers. <laughs> Although Chuck is very famous now for his rifle, he was a big league ball player at one time, and I think that's as high a mark on his escutcheon as we can find. But whether he was a fine ball player and is now a very successful television star is beside the point. You get the same treatment the rest got, and they're going to get it very soon. We'll have a famous mystery guest before the panel a bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger after this. And now let's meet our first challenger. Would you enter and sign in, please? Joe Ann Wester. Mark. That's all. <laughs> Joe Ann Wester. I think, if you don't mind, I'll announce that it's Miss. And that <laughs> Miss Westermark is back in school now, but she spends a very busy time during the summer and. Uh, some of the spillover in the school year with an occupation which we think is very interesting. Where are you from, Miss Weston? San Francisco. San Francisco. May I present our distinguished panel? Happy Don't you think they look distinguished? Yes. Yeah, you do? Well, that's oh. fine. Come with me, Miss Weston. Mark, sit right down here. Well, you know how we keep score on what's my line? Fine. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience looking in at home know exactly what your line is. panel, we can tell you that Miss Westermark is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Surf. <clears throat> Miss Westermark, does the service you perform apply to both sexes? Yes, it does. Do you come in contact with both sexes in the yes, work that I you do. do? Do you actually touch them in the service that you perform? No, I don't. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you see them? Pardon me? Do you see them? Yes, I do. Do they see you? Yes, they do. Uh, when you see them, are they usually in a good mood? Yes. Would you say they were out for a good time? Yes. Uh, they are not working. May I assume that they are not working no, when you see not. them? Uh, do you have anything to do with food or drink? No, I don't. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Connors. San Francisco. You know, the only thing I can remember uh, recently that happened in San Francisco is that uh, the giants died. <laughs> and I don't blame the giants, I blame the weather. <laughs> so uh, on that basis, 
Do you have anything to do with baseball? Yes. You do? How was that? Morning. I tell you why I ask, because it's incongruous, but do you play baseball? No. Very good, Chuck. That's three dot and seven to go, Miss Fred. Well, she's certainly not a bat girl, is she? <laughs> uh, do you do anything uh, in the baseball area which would keep you on the field at all? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Westermark, are you connected in any way with the Giants organization? Yes. Uh, do you work inside in the offices of the New York Giants? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you have anything to do with tickets? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Connors. Well, now let me pull back a second, have a conference. Are you <laughs> <in our> <laughs> I very rarely do this, mostly because it's embarrassing, but we'll take that back, Dorothy. I think it would be unfair to deny that Miss Westerbrook had nothing to do with tickets, I mean, with Miss Westermark had nothing to do with tickets at any time. Well, now, I must say that Chuck has clued me into something. Uh, I was thinking of perhaps the selling and taking of, but would you look at tickets ever? Yes. Are you an usher? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I think Mr. Connors and Miss Kilgallen, they did a uh, double play. Yes. I'd like to ask Mostly a question, Mr. question, John. Yes, Mr. Uh, Sir. I've read that the approaches to Candlestick Park are so uh, steep that several people have had heart trouble getting into their seats. Is there any truth in that, whatever? No, I don't think so. Well, is there, isn't it pretty steep? Ascent to the uh, to get into the stadium. You know, I've often felt that Bennett would have made a good prosecuting attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Candlestick Park is a lovely new park in San Francisco, right? That's right. And Chuck says the weather gets a little bit rough there sometimes, but uh, it's a fine well, ball I'll tell club. You one thing, John. You know, there was nothing to be said for the Giants up until this moment, but now <laughs> <laughs> I think they've done very well. I think I know what's the matter with them. <laughs> now, the only thing wrong with the Giants is is that Candlestick Park gets a little windy and they should move Toots Shaw to San Francisco and then the Giants would win. That's what would happen. I Thank you very much, really Ms. Nice Westermark, for being our guest. <laughs> nice to have you here. Well, I must congratulate you, panel, on that first challenger. Let's see what you can do with the second. Will you enter and sign in, please? John, Chief, <clears throat> Hellebrand, is that right, sir? <laughs> Mr. B Hellebrand, where are you from? Denison, Texas. Now it Spain had to be Texas. It <laughs> had to be. Denison, Texas. Believe that's where President Eisenhower was. That's born, right. He was born there. They grow them big down in that part of the country. You better believe they it. Sure. I do believe it, sir. <laughs> I do believe it. Well, it's nice to have you with us. May I present our panel, Mr. Hellebrand? Will you join me over here, please, sir? <laughs> now, you sit down, and I'll stand up, and then we can talk. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Do you know how we keep score? Yes, sir. Fine, then let's let the folks in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that Mr. Hellebrand is salaried, that he deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Excuse me, John. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Hellebrand, may I assume that you are not in the costuming business? You may assume that, yes. Uh, is this product anything that I might have seen, do you think? It's possible. Uh, do you think it is reasonably safe to assume that I do not own one of these things? I think it's reasonably safe I'm to I'm a city girl. Ms. <laughs> Gugan said she was a city girl. I think it would be fair to assume that 
uh, if you put the question, is, you know, would I own one of these in present terms, we would have to say likely no. Well, I put it the other way. No. So I get likely yes, don't I? <laughs> no, what I, it, I put it the other way. I said, would it be safe to assume I did not own one of these things? Yeah, I think it would be safe to assume All you right. didn't know one. Uh, is this thing, or has it ever been, alive? No, ma'am. No, that's one down and nine to go, Mr. Connor. <laughs> Sir, am I correct in assuming that the product with which you deal is not cattle. You're correct, it's not cattle. See that? Would some of you mind asking questions affirmatively when it gets to be your turn? <laughs> All right, I'll ask an affirmative one, sir. Uh, is the product with which you deal something that would be found generally in the home? I would Good think thing, that's yeah. a fair statement. And you could have said yes, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is this a product uh, which both adult and junior members of the family would have something to do with in one way or another? Yes. <laughs> yes? Is this a product that uh, is beneficial to yeah. members of the family? Is it beneficial to uh, the junior members of the family more than the senior? Yes. I don't Although know I think going they both, uh, the they'd both benefit by it. Yeah, they'd both tend to react in, in uh, its absence, I'd say that. <laughs> they would both tend to react in its absence. Uh, is this something that would, uh, that is bigger than a bread box? <laughs> no, oh, I don't think so. Two down and eight to go, Miss Pence. I got no place to go. Uh, is this product consumed? No, ma'am. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Hellbrand, does this product got any moving parts? <laughs> None? None. No moving parts. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Hellbrand, do you work for a profit-making organization? If it wasn't, I wouldn't be working for them. <laughs> I kind of figure that, Mr. Hellebrand. Uh, is this product solid rather than liquid? Yes. Uh, if it were in the home, would it be likely to be found in one part of the home rather than in any part of the home? No, ma'am. Could be found in any part of the home? Any place. Okay, Chuck, take it away. That's You're five down it? and five to go, Mr. Connors. I would like, with uh, Mr. Hellebrand's permission, to qualify it there that in one estate, it's true that it might tend to rest in one part of the house rather than another, but uh, still, uh, in another condition, we would have to agree that it could be found in any part of the house. All right, I see. I see what you mean, John. <laughs> in, in other words, like a refrigerator would generally be kept in the same place, uh, a bed might be moved to another room or something like for a guest. Is that the idea? Chuck, if you can't afford furniture for every one of your bedrooms, you let me know. <laughs> Well, I know I never keep the refrigerator in the bedroom, John. <laughs> uh, has it got anything to do with something for children which is not a toy? Yes. Is it a necessary item for children? Do we consider it in our Absolutely. society a yes. necessary item? It, it yes. would be. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have children. You said I probably didn't have it. Well, My children don't need it. <laughs> Well, is it something? May I? We have a conference for a minute. Yeah, you may extend the conference which began some short time ago. Get into the diaper reading. Exactly where I was going. Except not the diapers. I was wondering if it has something to do with uh, uh, a bed or a, a crib or a, one of those layettes that babies wash in and things uh, like that. Is well, it that area? You've got to select something. You've got to select something. I'll select it. something. Yeah. It, is it a, a, a baby layette? No. Thank you very well, much, Mr. Connor. Know? Six that down, is... four to go, Miss Fence. We have not ruled out clothes. Well, you just did with that. Layette. No, we haven't. Uh, no, a layette is uh, does a not. A layette is all the clothes a baby needs. Would it be found on the baby? This article, whatever it is, ever? Yeah. Would the baby ever hold it in its hand? Could. 
Would Actually, it be considered we're, in, a... we're on sticky ground. I'm going to throw it because Dorothy technically has made a point. A lay ed is for baby clothes, but actually babies are, are uh, by my understanding, no expert, believe me, but by my understanding, they also come out of the layette stage and they're still babies. And what Mr. Hellebrand does is sell baby clothes. He brought some along, notably blue jeans. jeans, you see. <laughs> Diaper Jeans Incorporated. Oh, now, does this funny. go in a layette, Dorothy? I might as well Not learn something. Not necessarily, It goes no. into a Texas layette, doesn't it? goes into a Texas <laughs> Well, I think that, that actually Chuck Connors has come up with the right answer. This belongs in a Texas layette, so we owe them a yes. And thank you very much, Mr. Hallibrand. Nice to have you here. And Bennett now has the diaper jeans. I hope Phyllis will be the first to know. <laughs> and we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment. But first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my colleagues on the panel are asked to blindfold themselves. As you all know, are the blindfolds in panel place? Mm -hmm. Are they in place panel? <laughs> uh, which then becomes first, the chicken or the hen with the egg? Now, what, are the blindfolds in place panel? Yes, sir. Yes. Good, will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? The panel is well aware, and this, Chuck, is more in case you might have forgotten it. In this particular part of the program, we turn to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with Miss Arlene Francis. Well, that was a glorious reception. Are you, would your name be found on the entertainment pages of the newspaper? Of that fine time, yes. <laughs> one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. I didn't, I didn't get the answer. Yes. Yes. That was John, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever have uh, cavorted in a moving picture set that might be a reconstruction of the Alamo? Uh, uh, not recently, no. <laughs> That's two down and eight to go, Miss Steel Gallup. Did you ever study dentistry? <laughs> become a fiction with this girl. <laughs> uh, no, I have, uh, I have been to dentist quite a few times. I have uh, not finished, no. Three thousand seven to go, Mr. Carter. Uh, are you a motion picture actor? Why, Jenny? Oh, yes. <laughs> Miss Francis? Are you primarily a comedian? No. <laughs> well, I'm afraid as referee, I have to change that answer to a yes. <laughs> have you ever been on the New York legitimate stage? I know I've played the Waterville stage. But not the legitimate not theater the legitimate as such. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. But he did say yes, or John said yes, to comedian. Is that right? Right. Are you Red Skelton? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I must say... Every week you ask the one if they're a dentist, you know? <laughs> I must say this is good fun for us. I'm sure that uh, Arlene and Bennett and Dorothy will remember. It was about five years ago. That's right. That Red came and joined us on a Sunday night, and it was five years ago that you you came to New York. That's right. He's Fred Allen for, guessed me. Fred Allen night. guessed you that night, and he's he's here for a very special reason. Actually, this is, um, I think, most everybody knows, in spite of the difficulties that uh, the organization is presently undergoing, or the burdens, let us say, it's carrying. 
This is the 15th anniversary of the United Nations. It's United Nations 15th anniversary week. And Mr. Skelton has come here to do his program in honor of the United Nations, and it's going to be all pantomime. All pantomime. Right? Yeah. I'm going to say a word. Uh, we have one big feature, which we use sunbeam, Castro shades. <laughs> And the surprise element of the whole thing is just not Castro shaving. It turns out to be Baptista's son. <laughs> well, actually, the, the, the title of Red's program... Oh, sorry, sorry, Dorothy. I just had another switch I was going to contribute. Uh, Baptista's son and doesn't like girls. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, title of Red's program <laughs> is uh, Laughter, the Universal Language. Mm. And I think it's going to be a, a very interesting thing to watch you do an entire program in pantomime. Well, but I, I, did, I did a pantomime show in Tokyo and in Korea. Then I entertained our boys in Korea. And then um, I have uh, done several things for the, uh, well, like the State Department would have people come to Los Angeles and for the um, uh, King of Jordan when he was mm -hmm. here. And so they... they, they They've asked me to do this, so it's quite a challenge and quite a thrill. What you you know, find it overcomes the entire barrier of language, then? I think so. It, right. At least uh, my type of, of, of pantomime that I do goes into the Italian feel. It's not the French feel like uh, Marcel Marceau. His is more of a classic ballet type, where mine is basic things. If, uh, I mean, I light a cigarette, you know that I'm lighting a cigarette, you know? But with his, you study a little bit, and it's more enjoyable, I think. But mine's more or less uh, right, laying it right on the line, as you might say. Well, I think you, where, where, you gonna, where are you going to do this act? Uh, right, as a matter of fact, from this theater. Right here? Uh -huh. Yes, and 50 of the delegates have already uh, uh, accepted, which means that they, have, they can bring four people with them. So we should have a pretty good ni uh, night. Miss Miller has accepted, too. <laughs> wow. That's one of 50 delegations we can presume safely. You must have 15 languages involved, and you'll be That's talking right. about it. Red, thank you for coming to see thank us. Thank you very nice much. Nice to see you. Thank you. We'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now let's meet a final challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Sita Aurora. Is that right? <laughs> Very quickly. Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss, and where are you from? Bombay, India. Bombay, India, living now in the United States. Yes. All right, may I introduce our panel? And do you know how we keep score? Yes, I do. All right, then we'll let the audience here and the audience at home exactly what your line is. All right. Panel, once again, we give you, you know, this is a, an occupation that is interesting in connection with Miss Aurora. See if you can do it very quickly. We'll tell you that she is salaried, deals in a service, and let's begin with Chuck Connors. Uh, Miss Aurora, do you deal in a service that in any way is instructive or of giving advice? Yes. Do you teach? Yes. <laughs> You're hot. Do you teach language? Yes. Yeah. Do, you teach, do you teach English to uh, your native people? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Chuck, I'm going to say this. Thank you I'm going to much. flip all the cards over. It was good, very good deduction. Actually, Miss Aurora does teach English at Fairlawn High School in yes. Fairlawn, New Jersey. Has been here in the United States for four years. Before that, was with the Indian delegation at the uh, United Nations, yes. right? Well, I thought that we'd give them more trouble than this, I must say. But it's awfully nice of you to have come you. to join us, and it's been a joy to have such a remarkably beautiful young lady on what's my line. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was uh, very disappointing for us, I must say. Chuck, it's been very nice having you with us in the panel, although you've been too good tonight. I'll tell you that right now. You didn't stick anybody. 
It's nice to also know that next week we're going to have an old colleague and friend of ours, Steve Allen, back with us. On that happy note, good night, Miss Kilgallen. Good night, and please come again and help us out, Chuck. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Arlene. Good night. Congratulations. Good night, Bennett. John, I have your Christmas present for you. Good night. Thank you, Bennett. <laughs> good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. This is Hal Sim speaking. What's my line?